Hello Sokol and welcome to my channel. Today I decided to finally pick up The Hunger Games by Susan Collins. I don't know if I ever mentioned it on my channel in any of my videos that I've never actually read The Hunger Games. I've seen the movies, I've experienced the story and back then I decided that that's going to be it for me. Not because the story was not enjoyable or uh, fun or I didn't like it but because I was kind of fed up with it. I've seen it once and I didn't feel like it requires um, a full-on immersion from me. This is one of those young adult starter series uh, that I ignored while I was growing up. It had a huge fandom and I frankly feel I was a bit intimidated by it. So when I did my try chapter book tag but make it ASMR video, I picked up The Hunger Games and I decided to give it a chance and I read the first chapter and I found it so entertaining. I think Susan Collins is a fantastic order. I actually am so used to sci-fi and fantasy books to be written from the third person. I was shocked to find that this is in first person and that I actually like that. I'm usually the third person past tense type of girl, but this actually makes so much sense for uh, the book to be in first person because we have to get into Katniss's head. Katniss, I think, was well portrayed in the movies so far, but she's so much more rebellious and distinctive in the book. I am 60 pages in and I just enjoy her so much. She's such a different character. The Hunger Games are literally so surprising to me because this is the book that made young adult fiction so popular. Well, one of the books. And it is such an outlier for many young adult troops. Katniss is so clearly driven by her love of her little sister and her family and she's so not into building a romantic relationship. And most dystopian young adult novels are driven by the character's romantic storyline. I really, really enjoy it. It also is surprisingly very fast-paced. We're already uh, going to the capital. And this book is 450 pages long, so I feel like we're going to spend a lot of time on the arena. And I'm not mad at it, because I think that it's one of the most interesting parts. Well, a lot of the things in this book are very interesting. It's very political. There are a lot of little details that the movies missed, I think. I'm really enjoying it. So I'm back with an update. I just filmed a couple of videos and then my battery had to be charged. So while I was charging the battery, I've read a bunch of chapters in The Hunger Games. And I'm loving this so much. I can't believe how good it is. It's an older series. I'm currently at page 173. Uh, the are now going to be released into the arena, well, at least soon. What I've noticed is Katniss is much more sugar-coated in the movie. I don't know why it is so, maybe it's because Jennifer Lawrence has such a round, plump face that in general indicates to the human mind that she's kind and that she is warm, but Katniss is such a realistic heroine I have not seen a protagonist like her in a while. A lot of protagonists that are written right now are so artificially flawed or 
castrated. I also like this word castrated. Their literal reason to be perfect feminist heroines as heroines that are mostly flawless but have a couple of flaws that they easily get over or that are not that terrible. Katniss compared to them feels so real, her reactions are very natural and I enjoy that. I don't like flawless characters. I'm so fed up with them. I don't like flawless characters. I don't need perfect heroes. I don't need them to be respectful of everyone. I want them to have conflicts. I want them to have flaws that they're never going to work through because that's the reality. I'm personally always going to be stubborn. I'm not planning to change that and I know that it's a flaw. I personally am selfish sometimes and that's not going to change because everyone is selfish sometimes. I love winning arguments and it's annoying but I'm not planning to change that because that's the part of my personality. That's what makes me me. And all I see right now are characters that are so good. They're so perfect. They're either perfect from page one and all their flaws are useless because they're not even flaws or they become perfect by the end of the book and I'm so bored. Maybe it's because young adult fiction cannot handle human complexity. I don't no. There are a handful of books that I can name that have characters that are not like that. I want to have real conflicts. I want to have real drama. Everyone cannot love everyone. That's just life. This update took a turn. What I want to say is that I enjoy Katniss very much. I also want to say that the movie sugarcoated her a little bit and the relationship between Peter and Katniss is so interesting. It's definitely a different dynamic compared to the movie because in the movie somehow they were presented more romantic than they actually are. I think because the book is written from the Katniss's point of view it was hard to translate into the movie with, without putting a voice over the movie, which is kind of cheesy in fantasy movies. In the book, the conflict between them is so sharp and Katniss doesn't trust Peter at all. I mean, in the movies it seems like she's paranoid, but the more I read the book, the more I think that Peter is not as simple as he appears. To be completely honest, I would like to finish this book today, just binge it till the end because I'm very, very invested. But it's 11 p.m. and I promised myself that I'm going to film another video maybe even two. I know I'm being overly ambitious. I have to film, but I'm at your literal recap because I promised that I'm going to do these recaps by monthly, but so far I can only manage one a month. And I have to pre-film before part of my family comes back from vacation and would mess with my filming schedule again. I'm going to update you later today or tomorrow in the morning or tomorrow in the evening depending if I'm going to finish it or if I'm going to continue reading it. actually 10 p.m. at the moment. I came back home 30 minutes ago. This is a gym top. I'm not wearing a bra right now. And I'm eating some grapes. And they're delicious. I stayed quite a bit late at work because I've had too many useless meetings. I went to Starbucks today to relax and not to think about work stuff and to read The Hunger Games. And I'm currently on page 200 and something. I'll check, wait a bit. So I'm actually much further than I expected to be. I'm on page 265 and uh, Katniss already met Rue on the arena and they already released the toxic bees. I love this scene so much. The story is very fascinating and I think the movie lost a lot of details. For example, it didn't tell much about the capital people and this, even though it is through the eyes of Katniss, tells us a lot about the people that live in the capital and about their habits and who they are. I'm enjoying it. 
and um, I truly hope to finish it today and I think it's very possible. So I finally finished The Hunger Games by Susan Collins and I really liked it. I'm going to continue with the series, hopefully in this reading vlog, vlog style form. I don't have many other opinions except from those that I've expressed earlier in the video, but I have to say that I did not expect Peter to lose his leg because the movie didn't include this plot line and I'm very annoyed because we do have more villains than heroes that are disabled in the media. Both villains and heroes are constantly put in danger and somehow only villains get hurt and it creates an idea that if you're disabled there's something evil about you. It's not a conscious idea but subconsciously I think it's very prevalent. Look at all those Bond movies, look at the superhero movies. It is so, so prevalent. I don't see any reason why they didn't want to include it because it would have been so easy. We literally have CGI now and there are green screens that are super easy to use. They could have green screened his leg and draw a um, prosthetic leg over it. Like, I truly don't understand why. They could also hire a disabled actor and hide his leg for a bit and then reveal it at the end of the movie, but they decided not to. And disabled actors need work, so... I've seen an interesting take recently where a person in question said that they don't understand why The Hunger Games is a trilogy where it's supposed to be a standalone and it would have worked well. And I disagree so much because just the first book on its own is so naive. Katniss would have never escaped the capital so easy after doing what she'd done. So I'm very excited for the sequel and I definitely think that it is one of those uh, sci-fi fantasy novels that needed one. Because the first book is unrealistic without a continuation. Anyway, thank you for watching this uh, video. In the comments down below, tell me about your experiences with The Hunger Games. Maybe you were in the fandom, maybe you were reading the books while they were coming out. I'm very interested because I uh, was not and I have not experienced much when it comes to The Hunger Games. You can tell me about any experiences you've had that were connected to the franchise. Thank you for watching this video again and I will hopefully see you soon, but until then, 